Let us turn to the Word of God this morning, and I'm going to read from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Therefore, awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Apostle Paul reminds us once again in chapter 6, verse 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand. Once again, he is reminding us in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and 1. But know this, that in the last days, grievous times shall come. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the word of God. Reminding of us as the day in which we are living. Your word is reminding us to awake to these facts. Help us to pay close attention to your instructions of God so that we will be well prepared in the days ahead. I pray God that the Holy Spirit of God will minister to us in a very special way. Give us receptive hearts of God. Open our understanding. Help us to receive your word with thanksgiving. Thank you for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. The title of this message is Trusting God in the Evil Days. The Bible is reminding us there will be evil days. And especially in the last days, I believe we are living in the end times. And we are facing the evil days in our own time. Only last week, Tuesday, 19 little children were massacred along with two of their teachers. The nation is mourning. They were shot to the point that they could not even be recognized. Little innocent children. And the husband of one of the um, dead uh, teachers came and saw the incident and he was heartbroken. And with heart attack, he passed away. Evil days. Why an 18-year-old has to kill so many kids because his heart was filled with evil. And therefore, we need to be careful these days. Why are these happening? As far as I'm concerned, it is happening because God is out of the picture. God is out of the equation. When you take God out of the equation, evil will triumph. Yes. Removal of prayer from schools. Let us pray that prayer will be reinstituted in schools in the coming days. Yes. You need to recognize God. Hallelujah. You take God out of the picture, the devil will take over. Ten Commandments removed from public places. Do not kill, says the word of God. Where do they understand these principles except they learn it from the word of God? Shedding innocent blood of babies. Did you know that about one million Babies were massacred in 2020. One million. And God will require out of your hand for the blood of these little innocent children. 
We need to return to the word of God. We need to return to God's church. Why are people not coming to churches any longer? You know, during the World War II, a Japanese man was hiding in the jungle. He was so afraid of the battle, of the war. He stayed there 15 years, not knowing that the war was over. COVID cannot take you captive and keep you away from the church. It is time to return to the church and honor the word of God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You want to see the evil defeated? We, you and I have to come to the Lord. I was talking with Pastor Ravi in Bangalore just a couple of days ago. And I asked him, how is the church? Are people coming to the church? He said, we had 21 days of prayer. And 12,000 people showed up for 21 days. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand this morning. Who will honor God these days? It is time to honor God. His word and the church of God. It is not time to sit at home. It is not time to sit at home. If you will sit at home, neglect the word of God and dishonor God, evil will take over with all of these people coming into the nation. All of these uh, drugs being distributed and, you know, brought into the country. What else can you expect? Evil days are ahead of us. But the only answer is God. There is no other answer. Politicians cannot give you the answer. Nobody else can give you the answer. But only God can give you the answer. You may be saying why there were no security in the school. There's no safety in the security. Two years ago, we were uh, looking at our security. We went to the car and we saw him sleeping. What good is it to have a security? A few years ago, about 30 or 40 years ago, a few robbers came to Eastway General Hospital. My wife can tell you the story better, but afterwards you can ask her. Or uh, two or three of them came with gone. And the security ran into the bathroom and closed himself. And a uh, few of the nurses went into another room. They closed the door and then comes another person. And he opened the door and they jammed him against the doorpost, broke all of his ribs. And he had to pay for the medications. That was a doctor. And Security is no security is at all. Only God can watch you. Only God can secure you. Only God can protect you. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, uh, the, the Bible says uh, in Psalm 139, no, uh, 121 and verse 4, Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Amen. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from evil. He shall preserve your soul. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you received that promise this morning? Amen. The Lord does not slumber. He does not sleep. But he's always awake. Hallelujah. Your answer is God. It is time to return to God. It is time to honor God. The Bible says, him that honors me, I will honor. It is time to come back to God. Isaiah 1 and 3 says, the ox knows its honor. 
and the donkey its master's crib. But Israel does not know, my people do not consider. Allah, sinful nation, a people of laden with iniquity, a brood of evildoers, children who are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked to anger the Holy One of Israel. They have turned away backward. It is time to return to God. Church, it is time to return to God. Oh, nation, it is time to return to God. That's why Jeremiah 8 and 7 says, Even the stork in heaven snow her appointed times, and the turtle dove, the swift, and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people do not know the judgment of the Lord. My people do not know the ox knows its honor. But my people do not know God. How many people are anxious to draw close to God these days? The psalmist says, as the deer pandeth after the water moves, so my heart pandeth after God. How many of you have a desire for more of God this morning? How many of you want to draw close to God this morning? Before the evil takes over, oh, let us draw close to God as a church. I know we are busy. Oh, but unless the Lord fights our battles, we will never win the battle. Yes. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I want to give you three things to remember as we are facing evil days. We are in the evil days. And they are saying, you know, there is a Food problems, uh, the, the prices are increasing. One man drove a thousand miles for a baby formula. And this is what is happening. There, are, there is no food or needed items on the shelves in the shops. And we are in the evil days. We are struggling. But let me prepare you for the future. You and I need God, need, need to recognize God as the only Savior. Yes. Number one is God knows about you. It is not time to worry about you. If God was able to feed two million people in the wilderness, don't you think that He is able to feed you today? Yes. There was no stores in the wilderness, no department stores. No Costco, no Walmart, no Sam's, nothing. But my God can create food out of nothing and feed you sumptuously. This is not time to worry about, but to understand God, who God is. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Psalm 139 and 15 says, my frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being unformed and your, in your book they were all written. The days fashioned for me when I said there was none of them. Hallelujah. God saw you even you became an embryo in your mother's womb. He saw your substance yes. even before you recognized it. Your mom recognized it. He saw your substance when it was not even formed. Do you believe that he sees you today? Do you believe that he sees you where you are, your problems and whatever you are facing? Do you think that he does not know it? Hallelujah. Thank God. He sees you where you are. He knows all about your problems. And even in the future, he is with you. He saw your substance. You know, one of the scientists who won the Nobel Prize said, 
A baby in the womb in 25 days begins to form the heart. And in 30 days, legs and arms are formed. And in 52 days, his eyes are able to see. How we neglect a human baby even after. How dare we to kill a baby after several months. He's already a person because God has seen that person. Yes. Even in the womb of the mother, God saw him or her as a person. And we need to respect that person as well. Amen. Innocent shedding of the blood will bring evil upon the land. Jeremiah 1 and 4 says, Then the word of the Lord came me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. You were a person in the sight of God even before you were born. How we ought to honor all of these little babies. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. God has a purpose for everyone. God has a purpose in your life. Oh, we better understand what God's purpose is in our lives. He ordained the prophet even before he was born. Amen. I was ordained um, some uh, 24 years ago. But that was after a long time uh, after my birth. But God ordained Jeremiah for a purpose. Today I want to tell you God has a purpose in your lives. You better understand God's purpose in your life. Each one of us is created with a purpose in God's heart. Will you serve God in this generation Will you understand God's purpose in your life and begin to uh, do the will of God in your lives? There is a purpose for us. God created us with a purpose. Oh, let us thank God. He knows you. He knows about you. He knows about you. And then he watches over you. Can you say, God watches over me? Watches over How many of you know that God watches over you? Yes. He will send his angels and watch over you. God is concerned about you. He will watch over you. Psalm 121 and 4. I read it already. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. We're talking about the evil days. Don't worry. He will watch over you. His eyes is on the sparrow. Oh, if he's watching over the sparrow, will he not watch us or watch, will he not watch over you? God is concerned about the lilies of the field and the sparrows of the air. How much more will he care about you? Why worry today? Why worry? Lay down your worries at the feet of Jesus this morning. Don't worry about tomorrow because he cares for you. He watches over you. How many of you believe that? Can you say, God watches over me? God watches over me. Isaiah 43 and 1. But now thus saith the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you, for I have called you by my name. You are mine. 
Oh, you are God's precious child. God says you are mine. You belong to God. When you go through the waters, it shall not overflow you. How many of you have been there? Yes. Going through the waters. When you go through the fire, it shall not consume you. Oh, look at the Hebrew children. They were walking through the fire, heated seven times. And as they were walking in the fire, there was the fourth one, hallelujah, walking with them. I want you to know that the fourth one will walk with you. Oh, in your times of trials, in your times of problems, some of you are so much worried about your problems. But I want you to know, God is with you. Amen. God is with you. Amen. If you know God is with you, give him a hand this morning. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. He will not sleep. He will not slumber. But he will go with you. Yes. Through thick and thin. Many of us sitting here are going through some problems. But I have good news for you. He is with you. Yes. Can you say he's with me? Oh, I shall, the water shall not overflow me. The fire shall not consume me. Because the God of Israel is with me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you believe that, you need to really give him a hand this morning. Just believe the word of God this morning. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. We are talking about trusting God in the evil days. I want you to know that the evil days are on the increase. That's why I want you to be prepared Evil days are going to increase in the coming days. And therefore, you need to understand that God knows all about you, all about your needs. And God watches over you no matter where you are. Isaiah 43, three, uh, 3, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give you men for you and people for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. God is even concerned about your descendants. God is concerned about your children. Oh, hallelujah, no matter where they are, God is going to bring them back. How many of you are concerned about your children this morning? Oh, praise the Lord. He says he will bring them back to you. He will bring them back to God no matter where they are this morning. God's promise is that he will take care of your children. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It doesn't matter how evil it is around us. But God's promise is that he will preserve us. Finally, I want you to know that God has given you the authority can you say authority? The last song was about authority. I was so surprised I did not ask them to sing that. It is the third point in the message. Jeremiah 1 and 9 says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. The word of God is powerful. Hallelujah. It is a hammer that will shatter the rock. The word of God is so powerful. And therefore, listen to the word of God. Do you have God's word in your mouth this morning? Amen. Do you? Appreciate the word of God. It is powerful. Study the word of God. Read the word of God. Because God's word is powerful. 
All he had to do is speak one word. Even this morning we heard, there is a miracle in your mouth. There is a miracle in your mouth. If you speak the word of God, miracle will take place. Speak that word. It is powerful. It is given to you. Don't cry out when you are faced with problems. But speak the word of God. Oh, the word of God is powerful. That's all you have to do. Or to do, the devil is a defeated one. When you speak, the devil will flee from you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You can speak the word of God and be healed. Nobody has to pray for you. You can speak the word of God and you can get deliverance in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just tell the devil in the name of Jesus, leave me. This is, you have to leave me. Learn to use the word of God. God put his word in Jeremiah's mouth. And he called him to be the prophet of the nation. See I have this day set you over nations and over the kingdoms. You have authority. God is setting you over nations and kingdoms. Over your own house. You have power in your mouth. You have miracle in your mouth. Speak that word. And you will see miracles. And see what did he say? To root out and to pull down. To destroy and to throw down. The word is saying you have the power to root out the evil ones. How many of you believe that? How many of you believe in that? How many of you will use the word of God? Instead of cussing and carrying on, use the word of God. Hallelujah. It is the devil that is behind your problems. Just speak the word. You have the power to root out. You have the power to build it. You believe that? Oh, just don't feel sorry, but learn to use the word of God. To root out and pull down. To destroy and to throw down. You have the authority. Say, I have the authority. I have the authority. I know you say that, but how, how many of you will use the authority? That's what counts. You need to learn to use the authority in times of need. This is a great principle in the word of God. Don't cry and yell and, you know, feel sorry for yourself. Use the word. Use the word. Jesus said to the storm, be still. Be still. You and I need to learn how to use the word of God. Say, be still. Devil, you take your hands off. You have no authority over me. You have no authority over my children. You take your hands off. Yes. Amen. Even when you need something, if you see some evil. You know, in a household, we have done this several times. Go there and just drive around and pray against that home. Tell the devil to leave that place. And I have seen it leaving. Put some water on the door and rebuke that Satan, bind his power, and it will leave. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because you have the authority. Yes. Yes. Did you know that you have the authority? Yes. See, that's why we are for gospel believers. I'm not interested in just preaching a sermon and leaving. No, I'm not interested in it. I want you to know the principles of the word of God. How you can use the principles of the word of God in your life. So that you will be above only and not beneath your head and not the tail. Amen. Yes. Use the authority. Matthew 18 and 18 says, I surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. 
Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The two of you may mean husband and wife. Or maybe two believers. You agree, earn it, and believe it. And he, the word of God says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Praise the Lord. You know, they didn't have to fight to um, bring the Jericho wall down. All they did is go around and go around and go around. And the power of God will be manifested when you do that. Because God has given you the authority. How many of you are going to go back and use your authority? Yes. Amen? It's good to hear. But how many of you will practice? Put that into practice. Use the authority. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Amen. Luke 10 and 1 says, After these things the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them two by two before his face into every city. And place where he himself was about to go. Then the 70 returned, verse 17, with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Remember, these are the 70. There was a group of 12 people, the, the inner group. Then there were 70 disciples and he had other disciples. And authority was given to them. They were not apostles. And the 70 possibly, uh, and the 70 were given the authority. And they brought the report of tremendous deliverance. And they saw the demons fall from heaven. Can this happen to you? God is giving you the authority today. God is giving you authority to overcome the evil days in the coming, coming days. You know, bad days are ahead. Let me warn you that. But I want you to know that God is with you. He knows all about you. He watches over you. And he has given you the authority to overcome the evil. Shall we rise?